that's cool. All right, folks. I am so out of practice. I had recorded this already. And then when I was playing it back, there were four different errors that I made. So that just shows me that I am really out of practice and we need to get back on track with doing these more frequently. So that's what I'll be doing this week. This is a special, special week. I'm going to tell you why it's special. I am not in my usual home. I'm actually at my friend Jocelyn Ty's home. She is a very talented artist. She spans pretty much all objects uh, in terms of um, media, you know, that she uses for art. And how long have I known her? Almost like a decade. I'd like to say probably even more than that. It's been so inspiring. She is one of the most inspiring people in my world. Um, and I feel so like, you know, in awe every time I see the next thing that she does. I'm going to show you her work. So this, as I'm talking right now, you're probably seeing her Instagram page. And yeah, she is a Taiwanese artist who grew up in Shanghai. I met her in Shanghai many years ago uh, through mutual friends. And uh, she, we were so young then. It's so funny to me. It's like at that time, everyone, you know, in her 20s, I think we were all in, um, yeah, like her early 20s. And now I think we're all in our, thir yeah, we're all, we are all now in our 30s. So yeah, you'll probably see here, she, her, the body of work that she has done it's like it's not just one thing like she she does she does she ma she brings her art and her vision across like everything and anything that she comes across it's pretty incredible like wine to chocolate coffee um she, recently she brought in rugs and i really wanted to get one because it just would be nice to see her work like her character like in my space as well there's actually like something that happened to me when I arrived here she has like a few sculptures in the house and I was wearing like all black and she like put the sculpture um, above her kitchen where there's like this really lovely light and I was sitting there in the kitchen eating with the same light that that figure was sitting under pretty much and it was like we were both sitting together in this like warmly lit space and I felt not alone. It was so incredible. And though I'm not even alone anyway, like cause I'm with two cats, Maury and Louie, and the two of them are such good boys. Uh, we've been hanging out and having a great time. I really love them. They're just such good boys. They're so well behaved. They're currently cuddling and sleeping together like in the, c the um, pet carrier that they like to sleep in and like, all snuggled up together so it's just so lovely to see them let's move into what this week's going to be about it's going to be about jocelyn's music collection i don't know the music that she listens to so we're going to get to know jocelyn better by listening to her record collection before we move into that i just wanted to say something because i just remembered i'm actually i like didn't think about it like I, I, w I threw in a few t-shirts for my trip that were just like you know ready to just nice and clean like ready to go <laughs> you know in front of everything else and uh, in my closet and one of them was the shirts that she made so I was like what better to wear that shirt while I do this episode to start things off see here um, she made this shirt I think last June or July it was like for a fundraiser um, she's really cool like that and um, so I got one it says multitudes on it and it was inspired by everything everywhere all at once so um, obviously I got it because I love that movie it's so pretty I love this shirt like I actually wear it a lot so we're gonna start off with one of the albums that I found past lives you know I don't know if you've seen this movie if you haven't, I really recommend that you check it out. If you have watched it, well, this is uh, 
this is the music from that movie um, by the two composers, uh, Christopher Bear and Daniel Rawson. Very beautiful packaging. What, what I like about this uh, record, sorry, I'm working with one hand here. I forgot my stand for my microphone. So out of practice, guys. I don't even know how, like, I just threw my audio box into my suitcase, and I was like, we're going to New York. Um, so I brought whatever, and at least I got all the, the basics in, right? Very, very, like, neutral colors, very light. And, hold on, let me see if I can finagle this out with one hand. Let's try it. Okay, we're going to cheat. We're going to use the other hand. Look at this. Look at the vinyl. It is a white vinyl. It's like a beautiful moon disc. Okay? So it's just lovely to see this, um, that they really care about the way that they package this. A lot of love that went into making it. Obviously, if you can see it from the trailer, so I'm, I'm not going to be spoiling more than the trailer. It is a heavy movie. So seeing the uh, packaging of this record being a little bit on the lighter, brighter side in terms of color, in terms of, you know, this like neutral feeling to it, uh, you, you know, then hear the music and it's transporting music, you know, it brings you to the story world. And it's it's heavy. Like there are some songs in there that will make you want to cry. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually, so I'm going to share the Spotify playlist, the official Past Lives soundtrack playlist that the crew made. So you're going to find that in the link in my bio um, or in the description box if you're watching on YouTube. This is going to be a week where we explore Jocelyn's music record collection. And we're going to start with Past Lives first. Because it really spoke to me when I saw it. I was like, that's the one we're going to start with that today. And I can tell you that I do know Jocelyn loves this movie very much. And it really spoke to her soul. And I, I, it did it for me too. So, like, we share that in common. And, um, and it, I think that, you know, anyone who is someone who's moved and immigrated to um, away from their home country or where they grew up. And um, it's like you have two different, two different um, stories that you have to somehow bring together and integrate as you get older. When you go from living in one country or living in like one community and in a culture with all these people that you were so close to and, you know, would see all the time, like every day, the school bus, you go to school, you lunch, the cafeteria, you know, hanging out, you know, going to the movies after school or on the weekends, going to the bookstores, hanging out, eating ice cream. The list goes on going to Starbucks because that was like a big thing growing up in, in, in Asia. Going from that world and then growing up and having to move away. <coughs> And then, like, it, it's not that it severs the relationship with people that you used to know, but it definitely puts a, it's like a delay. Like, it does the thing where it's like you're so caught up in the moving and you're so caught up with settling down and really getting comfortable in your new life, right? Your physical world and trying to build stability and new connections there so that you have roots and so that you can grow, it's a skill to have that you have to build, but it's like there are certain, it's, it's almost like survivalist, like skill set where like you developed a, an ability to, to, um, know what priorities you have and like what you value and like items that really matter to you. And then there are things that you just have to chuck, you know, that aren't like relevant to you. And you just like, don't even need to really worry about anymore. And like, you realize just don't, um, hold the value as like certain other things. So it's like you have the ability to discriminate what va what value what what you value and what you don't value as much, and that's like a really hard thing to do to say goodbye. And that goes along with, you know, there are people that you can't obviously bring with you, and so that is heartbreaking. So like that's what I feel like this film really did well with doing is is really uh, expressing that that uh, the heartbreak 
and the like apathy around it as well where it's like you love it so much but then you have to be apathetic at the same time because it's not like you can do anything about it especially when you're a child or um it's you know a matter of a life circumstance that really is um forcing its hand to push you towards a different you know life and and it's out of your you know quote unquote control you know as an individual to really avoid right so um it's like the momentum of of a sit of the situation and and two different paths kind of diverging at that crossroads so it's a beautiful film heavy film and and it's really cool that um she has this album actually i'm like really happy she does have this album because here i am like sitting and thinking about like i don't think about it very much right like i don't reflect on it because it's so heartbreaking oh my god i'm getting choked up but it's like it can happen with friends too it's like people that you used to be with and you love and you don't want to ever leave behind but then here you are and it's like it's happening and then you're kind of like forced to have a new life and like you then you end up meeting new people and it's like these new people are in your life now it's like at one point those people fill the time and you you know your energy and then the people that like you never wanted to let go it's like you never wanted to let those people go out of your life in fact you'd still give them your energy if you could but um but you know as time passes things happen and then um the relationship it's not that it like goes it doesn't it doesn't transform it's like almost kind of frozen in time it's frozen in time with those memories it's not going anywhere it's like in the refrigerator you know of your brain and in your heart too and it's just waiting you know it's just waiting for you to return and like pick things up there's no there it's, it's like we don't take it personally like that we don't hit each other up even when we're in like the same city or even like nearby because like we've gotten so used to just being in our own worlds but there's a lot of love there and it's like when our paths do cross it's that that is the most beautiful it's like a serendipitous experience. It's like so romantic, even though it's like we're all just friends, but it, there's like so much love around it because it's like, wow. I think there's a part of our hearts that like is kind of still broken. And like, so seeing this movie was like really healing for me personally, personally. And um, I was just like, dang, I really miss my friends like so much. And you don't want to, like, think about it. So I, that's, like, kind of, like, it's, like, the repressing of, like, those feelings. So the apathy around it because you love so much. Okay. So we're going <laughs> to, I'm talking way too much. I'm talking way too much. Let's get into it. So this is the soundtrack to Past Lives. Uh, the soundtrack, you know, on Spotify Faces fading in the rain, recalling memories. 
Beautiful. That was the Sharon Van Annen song, Quiet Eyes. It was composed, it was written, um, made for this film. And I... Uh, gave me the chills because of the lyrics and um you know starting off with what moving statues in the park mosaic faces fading in the rain recalling memories of loss yet untouched and unscathed is this really a mystery life where we only learn from our own mistakes first off little anecdotal th story whatever um from your girl odd here there was an image that popped into my mind and, uh, you know, I used to live in Brooklyn and I, um, <coughs> I worked at a bar and I actually got this job at the bar because of a guy that I met at a hot dog restaurant. Of course, there's a hot dog restaurant, not a stand restaurant called Criff Dogs um, out in New York City. They have multiple locations. Shout out to Crip Dogs. But I met this guy and I really liked him a lot. And he brought me to this bar out in Brooklyn one night to see his other friend, you know, and say hi. But in the process, I got a job at that bar because I needed work. And they were looking for someone to work at their cheese bar. So... I took the leap um, of faith and I I did mention this in my other episode where I spoke with Eric, Eric Coates, and I tell the story about how I got that job. But it's just funny to me because here is another memory that's connected to, you know, this story. It's like this guy, he had me on the back burner all the time. And no heart, you know, like no feelings, um, bad feelings about it now. But at the time, it was really rough for me because I like really wanted love and romance. And he was really sweet. And, you know, I still think he is a really sweet human. Very, very nice person. It just didn't work out between us. But, um, you know, like I remember when I realized that it wasn't going to work out. Like, I, I really always thought that it was going to happen. I always thought it was going to happen. I wasn't sure. It was, like, never really clear to me. It was super vague, the relationship. Um, but it was, it was it had its moments, right? It had its moments where it was, like, really, like, wow, this could be great. Um, it's exciting. It's new. And <laughs> I went to the park that was near my home across the street, uh, the Fort Greene Park. And I didn't know anything about this park. I had never gone there before for some weird reason. It's like close by and I never went, I think because it wasn't like a popular park. I'd always go to Prospect Park. Um, but Fort Greene Park was actually closer. So I went to it and it was pouring. It was a gloomy day. And it was like the day I was going to like fully release this whole relationship thing and like just give it away, you know, like give it away back to universe. Like, like I'm letting go of it. I don't want to feel pain anymore. I'm done. Right. I'm done with this. And I went to the park and it was a really sad, gloomy day too. So it was perfect. Like I was just so depressed. So I had to go outside and parks are really great. Like for that, especially, you know, in the city I'm um, here, like no one goes to the park when it's raining. So if you're ever really sad and heartbroken, like go to the park and just cry. It's okay. I'm sure someone else is out there too doing it. I did it. And just like, you know, enjoy the scene or let nature like heal you and wrap its arms around you and just like let your tears like blend in with the rain. You know, just let it happen because um, you're not going to feel any better, you know, in the same space that you're just like feeling awful and, and nothing's happening. Nothing. There's no, there's no connection with anything but your own sadness and, uh, you know, obviously do what you, what you can. I'm sure we've, you know, I, I know what it feels like to not be able to get up, but when you get like, even just like a flicker of energy, um, rise and, and step outside and see how you feel. And then see if you can walk a few more steps to like the closest park and just like sit, you know, and look at the trees and the birds. 
um, it will, it will, maybe you'll feel differently. Who knows? I can't say for sure, but it worked for me. And I was listening to Tame Impala's, um, I think, which song was it? It was the more I know, well, the what is it? I, uh, the less I know, the better that no, it was, lo it was lonerism. It was a lonerism. Yeah. It was lonerism album. I listened to it from start to finish and I was just like, Oh, you know, I was like, Oh my God. Like that was the time I was just like, Oh, like that album. I was like, Oh my God. It's so sad. It was like 2017 or something. And it was a perfect soundtrack to such a depressing walk, but I felt so much better. And then I found out cause I'd never gone to that park before. So this is the park and I was walking up the stairs and I found at the top of it information about the park. I was like, I never been here before. What? What's this? And I was like, so curious about it. So you like get in, go into the park and then you like walk up these stairs. It doesn't look like that anymore. Um, it, it looks a lot more like, let's see if there's a better photo. Mm, there's no photo here that can really show what it looks like really. Um, this, maybe this one, but yeah, it's, it's a pretty, it's pretty uh, straightforward park. I mean, it's got its fields, it's got trees, and it's got a monument. That's what makes it Fork. Why is it called Fork Green Park? So I was like, why is it called Fork Green Park? I like entered the park uh, around, oh, like around this corner here. And I walked, like, because I was so depressed, I didn't follow the paths. I just walked through the trees up to the top here. And I read a plaque about, you know, the park this is what I found at the top. It was like this bath, the, the bathrooms <laughs> and this monument. And I was like, what is that? It's a torch. There's a torch statue. Okay. And turns out it Fort Green Park, it used to actually be fortifications during the um, American Revolutionary War. You know, when the Americans, George Washington, that was general, wasn't president yet. They fought against the British and there was actually, um, okay. So like apart from that, I was like, why is there, why is it called, uh, the prison prisoner, like martyrs, prison ship martyr monument. Like there was something about that. I was like, what, what prison ship martyrs, what? And another aspect to this park is, is that it's a graveyard. Like, I didn't know this. I was walking in a park that was actually a veiled graveyard. It's a crypt for 11,500 prisoners who were taken in by the British and left in really shoddy conditions um, on the ships, the British uh, ships that were um, parked out on bay uh, in the bay. And, uh, you know, when, like when everything was over, I think there's like a bunch of bodies that were left, um, in those ships f and they, you know, so many people just died of like disease and starvation from those quarters and the, the cramped quarters and, and the ship, 11,500 people on these ships stuck on these boats. Imagine being on a boat, not being able to get off a boat. Whoa. Nightmare. Um, nightmare, seriously. And, um, so this is actually, they buried the bodies underneath the park and it's a hill. So it's just like a massive grave site. So there's something really interesting about the park. It does have this feeling of a somber feel to it when you're walking around it. It doesn't have like a jolly, like, you know, Oh wow. So like light. No, like you actually feels like there's this heaviness to the place. And it could be because it's a graveyard. <laughs> Nuts. So, I don't know. That's just, so those lyrics of the song really, um, the lyrics of the song really reminds me of that experience. And, and it's just like a moving for me as well to, um, I, I have like haven't thought about that memory in so long. And then, um, you know, what else about the lyrics that really spoke to me? Um, there's a lot more to the lyrics that like really speak to me. I paused for a long time there because I like started to kind of like get choked up a bit, kind of like choked up a bit because, um, 
yeah like a long car drive music in the air comes from a place out of nowhere staring at stars or a lightning bug on a faraway stair on a torch lit night the field of death on this marble steps we'll meet again in light and that's that's how it's done and how it's undone that's how it starts and that's how it starts and how it's unknown my gosh there's a feeling like things are going to continue right like you know when you have those memories and like that feeling that the memory is like still there so it's still active and it's it's like i said it's like in the fr- a refrigerator and that that's like the feeling the sensation of this experience it's like they captured it so well in those lyrics when um they say that's how it's done that's how it's done and how it's undone it's like what like w- w- things are going to pick up again right <laughs> it's like the hope um but then there's it's just a question really it's a really big question of like whether or not it's going to happen because there's no real plan set um those are re- those are some really tough that's a tough relationship situation to be in is and yet i think so many people are just like in that state it's like a limbo period it's like how many people in your life do you know are just kind of like in limbo with you when you think about them you know it's like you're just kind of was left hanging wow speaking of prisoners (laughs) speaking of a prison ship (laughs) it's like kind of like that it's like being on a boat not being able to get off and it's like you're literally docked but you can't get off the boat (laughs) <laughs> it's like can we get off the boat already anyway so um so i have to ask though will we meet again to those who i'm uh who have who i'm ha- left hanging with <laughs> no pressures ever but like will we meet again <laughs> just kidding i kid um but yeah very beautiful a long car drive music in the air hmm that really r- oh that kills me. That kills me. That kills me. Because that really does remind me of of, uh, of a memory that's pretty recent. And I can't talk about it because it's pretty recent. I can only talk about... That's the rule. I can only talk about memories once it's been like five, at least five years. And then you can talk about it in public. You know? That's my, that's my standard. Um, that's my journalistic standard. Um, I just made that up. But it feels right. Okay, so th- I hope you enjoyed what you heard. And, you know, I hope you um, check out this playlist and you find something you like. I'm going to be making a mixtape for the week because every day, just to get myself back into the flow of doing these episodes and getting used to this whole thing, of, um, you know, <laughs> I'm, I've, I haven't made an episode since Christmas. 25th or something like that yeah it was it was uh december 25th or 24th and i'm so out of practice and so i need to get back into the flow of things i'm going to be making an episode every day i'm going to be pulling in a record or two from jocelyn's uh collection and i'm going to be building a public playlist uh so yeah they'll be public and i'll be also sharing the link for that when it's finished i'll publish it okay so thank you for listening and tuning in Have a great rest of your day. And I hope that your wildest wishes come true. Take care now. And don't forget to brush your teeth. Bye-bye.